Welcome to my LumaFusion hints and tips video. This is a compilation of things to help the new or even experienced user become more proficient when using LumaFusion. So let's get started. As with any new software there is a learning curve that sometimes leaves you feeling frustrated and lost with so many new buttons and menus. But there is an easy way of navigating around when you are lost. The help and settings button doesn't just take you to help and settings. You can also press and hold it down, this will bring up button labels for most of the icons on the screen. This is by far the most efficient way of finding your way around when you start off. Next I want to talk about one of the fundamental features I liked about LumaFusion, which was the ability to stack up to 6 objects on the timeline. This gave options for multiple video clips or effects, basic and advanced title scenes or simply placing a channel logo easily across a whole video. There are a few options to help when timelines get more complicated that will improve efficiency. All the timelines are by default open, visible and audio enabled. This means you can move items around, see them on the preview or exported track and hear the audio from them. If you want to make changes to titles, but in the edit screen it keeps swapping tracks to the one below, or you just want to fix a timeline in place whilst working on other parts you can do so by clicking the padlock on the main screen. This keeps it visible but stops any unwanted actions. You can also hide a timeline from view by clicking the eye icon. For example, do this if you want to store clips for later use but not be visible on the preview or exported video. If you've recorded video with audio but want to use a voiceover or a music track, you can mute a whole timeline by clicking the speaker icon. You can still use the audio from individual clips if you wish by pressing the detach icon and placing it in one of the six audio timelines below. The main timeline automatically condenses or expands as clips are added, moved or trimmed. You can set the main track to overwrite mode by clicking the mode change button. This fixes the tracks in place but they can be trimmed or overwritten by other tracks if needed. If there are gaps when the mode is changed back, they are replaced with a blank clip. This is useful when compiling video to music and you don't want all the tracks to move around automatically. The last part about the timeline is track linking. When tracks or transitions are added they are linked to the main timeline track. This is to prevent them moving their positioning when items are added or removed from earlier on in the timeline. If you want to move an individual clip but it's linked to other items, you can press the unlink icon to separate them. You can turn off automatic linking separately for any of the additional timelines to make changes, but we'll need to enable it again to use track linking. Here are a few quick fire tips to finish off the video. Press the mixers button to see and adjust audio levels per timeline. Press the headers button to hide the tab and get more timeline real estate. Pinch to zoom on the timeline to move items up to one frame at a time, and finally when selecting a timeline item, press the info button in the three dots on the bottom right of the preview to view file info, rename and even color code items. I hope you found this video useful. Please leave a like and a comment, and check out my other LumaFusion content for free downloads and more tutorials.